this is the second video that I have filmed. So, in my Facebook group, um, there's been a, a, a conversation about collaging and people finding it difficult. So, I said I'd have a, have a little go at doing a video. One, because I haven't done a video for so long, I've completely lost my mojo, it's just gone off somewhere and it has not come back and I've been really struggling recently. Um, I also made the mistake that I think a lot of people make when I did the first video is I made it too complicated I was thinking about it way too much and I was trying to produce something rather than collage so um, you know I I have made uh, these are two of the things that I made in the last video um, that I'm not going to put up and these became not just collages, they became items. And I think as soon as you try to create something, collaging becomes more difficult. So I am going to collage. That's all I'm going to do. And I'm going to use this or one of these. Okay. And once you've done the collage, that's when you start to think about making it into something. That's easier than trying to make something from the outset. So I am going to ink around the edge of this. Um, yeah, I've, I ha I've had a mojo kind of crafty issue. I've been able to do my digital stuff. You know, um, I, I've done lots of house moving around and things like that. But I have just not been able to, um, to create. I've just seem to I don't know what's happened but you know it's not happening for me at the minute and maybe doing something like this will help me get it back so um, all I'm doing is I'm going to create a collage now I'm using book pages I've got Edith Holden this is obviously one of my digital kits and I am just going to collage. That's it. I'm not thinking about turning this into anything at the minute. So my aim is to just cover this, cover this. That's it. I just want to cover it. <coughs> or as much of it as I possibly can. It's okay if there's a bit left. You know, that's fine. ink that so just decide what goes on top what goes on the bottom where you overlap if you overlap um, but it's just about sticking stuff down to cover your your substrate or your item that you are filling in okay that's it that's all I'm doing I'm just collaging onto a piece of paper or index card and I really am not going to think about it this time round because I thought about it way too much in the last video so I am gonna just take my paper the only you know even to some extent a good rule to follow is on the whole you want to use tones that kind of work together but you then want some kind of pop, maybe, of colour to just complement whatever it is you're making. So let's say you're doing a French theme journal. Um, a lot of people associate blue with a French theme journal. So you would possibly pop in a little bit of, of blue. Here we go. There we go. That's what we're going to add. Um, and it's just about using little pops of unless you want a really brightly colored collage and then you would use contrasting colors that maybe clash um, to just fill in your space because this is what we're doing we're filling in a space and this is so quick and easy when you don't think about it let's pop that over there now I'm not sure that I want to include that I do like this top piece here and it kind of I'm gonna cut this top piece off I'm gonna have this flat because I'm gonna have it flat against the 
the top of the index card so I'm going to keep that flat. Um, one thing I did say in my last video is <laughs> uh, that I'm not going to put up. I've had a lot of questions recently about my printer. Um, I don't know why, maybe it's that time of year where everyone's thinking about getting a new printer. Um, I use an EcoTank, Epson EcoTank. Now, the last one I had was the 2600, um, my A4. And I got that a year ago last August, so like 18 months, you know. it's I've had it a long time. And I've only ever, and I do a lot of printing, I've only ever purchased three out of the four inks. And they have not been in very long, so they are still, you know, fairly, there's still quite a lot of ink in the, um, in the printer. And they are like £10 a bottle. So it's cost me, in 18 months, £30 in ink. Just as a little indication of how cheap the eco tanks are to run. So I've just bought the A3. Um, made a bit of a boo-boo. I wanted the A3 because I wanted an A3 scanner. And it isn't an A3 scanner. It's only an A4. Because apparently printers do not come with A3 scanners, even if the description item says A3, printer, scanner, copier. They will not be an A3 scanner. Just as a little tip for you there, you're supposed to automatically know that, according to Jessops. You should just know that printers do not come with an A3 scanner. Okay, um, so, done. This is now a background for us to work onto at another point. You know to add to I could add that blue ticket if I wanted to I could add um, do, 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 have I got anything I could add a focal point image I can add whatever um, but that is my background collage without thinking just just kind of done so I'm gonna do another one uh, what should we start with this time this time I'm gonna start with, with images just put page. Let's just add a big ward of background interest. I'm really not going to think about it because you do usually get a kind of much more fluid um, outcome if you're not, you know, stressing over what to do. Uh, I, I, I do, I really struggle with this kind of thing, even at the best of times, if I overthink it, if I try and make it too complicated, if I, um, you know, if I think of this as an item rather than a collage background, and that, at the end of the day, is, is what we start with. We start with a collage background. Uh, there are people who do this a lot better than me. You've got... Um, Wendy has recently done her uh, Ringbound Journal series, and she's got her envelopes. They're marvellous. Now, I'm not sure if I've said this in this video or if it was the last one, um, so I apologise if I'm repeating myself. Um, Gail, uh, when Gail lost her mojo, she started with some collaging to kind of get herself back into it. So she's got a fantastic video on collaging and I think, you know, when you're filming and you're chatting and you're talking, um, apart from the fact I'm feeling really uncomfortable at the minute, um, it's easier to not think about it as much. It, but you've got two kind, of, two kind of videos really. You've got one where you're trying to concentrate and really give somebody some instruction and some... Um, kind of teaching of how to do something and you need to concentrate a little bit then you need to you know really think about what you're doing because you want to give people um, you know the best possible instruction that you can as clear as possible but when you're doing something like collaging it's actually really easy and beneficial to be talking to someone at the same time because you're not um, going to be I want this at a bit of an angle, I think. You're not going to be thinking it too much. You're not going to be 
putting too much pressure on yourself. So, you know, even if you do it while you're talking to, you know, somebody at home, just to kind of, um, just to kind of, um, I like that corner, so I think I'm actually going to, I'm going to reduce the size of that just so it fits. Just, you know, make it easy on yourself and don't be too hard on yourself, says me, who is always my worst enemy. Okay, so we have that. Um, I want something a bit plain, I think. I want something reasonably plain in here. I don't want it all straight and square. Um, I mean, you don't even have to ink this. It doesn't have to be inked, you know. You can just lay stuff down, cover it up, start with this background. I quite like this little little piece here with a bit of colour on it. You know, it's a great way to use scraps up that you've you've maybe torn off or cut off other things. Collaging with um, napkin is brilliant as well if you've got lots of napkin pieces left over. And I think I'm going for that. Something else that I've just ripped off and is sitting on my desk. But it's interesting. It's an interesting shape. It's interesting colours and it will complement what we've got so far. And it would also balance out. There we go. Now, I honestly did not think about this, as I don't know, you could probably say, you can tell, that there's two collages we've done in quite a short space of time, nice and easy, and I think they're quite effective and they will look great once you've got something as your centrepiece stitched around the edge or you could just literally pop a little tab on here, pop it into a journal and you've got a lovely journaling card. Okay, let's do one more thing. Let's do... Oh my God, my little box. Okay, that's a very badly cut tag. Here we go. Let's do a... That's probably cut in exactly the same way. Now this time I'm going to use, um, I'm going to use, again, this is already collaged, so half the job is done for you. There, I mean, I'm not, you know, trying to persuade you to go out and, and grab my digitals. Um, there are hundreds and hundreds of of papers that are already collaged for you and that takes away a lot of that hard work you know it's done and then you only have to add a couple of little bits to it to make it um, to make it look a lot more collaged than it actually is and it's weird that I find it so much easier to collage on the computer than I do to collage in real life maybe that's because there's more options for, for mistake making on the computer. Now what I am going to do is just very, very roughly ink this. And the reason I'm just roughly inking the edges is because um, I'm hoping that I'm going to cover a lot of this up. I just need to add a bit more glue down here. And for some reason you forgot to add that at the beginning. Okay, so um, let's see. And now what I'm going to try and do is I'm not worried about going off the edge because I'm going to trim. That kind of I'm going to trim it. So again, very very. Um, not rough, but not overthinking. Try not to overthink. Okay. Now I'm using the old scissors for this because have I talked about these in this video? Oh, I don't know if I have. 
Um, I'll do that in a minute. Uh, again, I want to fill in some gap. So this one is wider at the bottom and thinner at the top. So this one I'm going to go wider at the top and thinner at the bottom if I can manage to tear it like so. That works. Yep, that works. Um, I'm not going to ink this piece. I hope I'm in frame. And I hope you can actually follow what I'm trying to say. I'm struggling. I'm really struggling. I think it's just been too long since I've done a video. Okay, anyway, scissors. Um, I Again, I get lots of queries about my scissors and these are the X-Cut scissors and they're about five pounds. They're fairly cheap and they are very, very good scissors. I have just bought myself thinking, oh, I treat myself to a pair of Tim Holtz scissors. Um, these were about eight pounds and they are identical. They are absolutely identical. Even the the rivet that's holding, you know, the hinge of the scissors, they've got the same pattern around the outside. They've got the same um, serrated edge. The handles feel exactly the same. They've got the same um, closure to, you know, to stop them hitting the handles. The only the only thing is these ones are slightly pointier because this this pair I've used to um, to. <laughs> Well, I've used it to do screws. I've done screws up with my scissors. Um, I know I shouldn't, but I have. Now I'm just going to cover this little bit up. I'm just going to actually go round the edge with the... I'm going to trim it again from the back. So yeah, if you're on the market for a new pair of scissors, the X cut, very, very good value. Now, what do I want at the bottom? I don't know if I want something plain. Or let's see what we've got in here. Perfect. A stamp. Still on the piece of paper. Um I I, I mean <laughs> Um, showing my geekness now but um, I used to collect stamps I've still got a massive collection of stamps which I would not use in my journals but my granddad years ago taught me how to take the backs off you know when I was a little girl he was um, a stamp collector which is why I started collecting them so you use your your little bowl of warm warm water soak your stamps for an hour or two then lay them out on a piece of um, like cartridge paper to let them dry off but now I don't actually remove the backs of all of them because they just look so nice when they're like that so there we go collage now there is one two three four there's five pieces on here but because I've used a piece of collage paper you know as the bat as the base it looks like there's a lot more collage going on and like I said, you've got so many different paper pads that are collaged and, you know, they're just, they're just brilliant, aren't they? So, collaging. There we go. Three very simple, quick collages without thinking. Really helped me out, I think, today. Um, I hope you found it useful. My biggest tip is scraps of paper, don't think about it, just aim to cover your base, whatever your base is. Don't think about it as a finished product. Once you've got these, you can then use these as your base and think about how you're going to use them. Even if it is just, you know, popping a piece of lace along the bottom and a tab at the top and then you've got your journaling card. But that's it. Um, I hope it was useful and thank you so much for watching and bearing with me. Um, I will see you again soon.